go down to Rome's. It was a hot one in Savannah today. I do declare. So it's super hot. Uh, at Vikings Cardinals first joint practice, also hot is the Vikings deep ball offense. But we'll get into that, man. Uh, and this is the first of two joint practices with Arizona ahead of the uh, uh, the final exhibition game at Historic US Bank Stadium at noon on Saturday. Uh, so we got some takeaways uh, from the things and doings that went on at TCL Performance Center Bar <laughs> and Grill. That was a good burp. Uh, on Wednesday, let's get into them. Number one, it was hot. Yeah, and be- beyond the heat and whatnot, they did move practice up an hour. Uh, you did see a couple players uh, moving off to the side, uh, potentially with some hydration, uh, potentially with some cramps issues, but that is expected. Uh, but also, uh, it felt like Kevin O'Connor and Gannon were very smart about things, so they were able to get things done uh, and be able to uh, get everyone in without incident. Uh, number two, Kirk was dropping bombs, man. So that was the thing where that must have been a mandate of what Kevin O'Connell wanted to work on today with the offense. Is that deep ball? Chicks dig the deep ball, man. So Jalen Rager, Brandon Powell, two for, for Justin Jefferson. KJ had, had one as well. I mean, it really was impressive. Uh, the touch uh, that Kirk was uh, was uh, showing out there, and it, it makes you it makes you feel good about what's going to be going on with the Vikings pass game, especially off a of play action, man. Uh, also, Kirk was dropping f bomb. So the annual Kirk Cousins, not not Frick. Not, not Frick, not Fudge, an, an actual F-bomb. Uh, so he dropped it in uh, after some frustration in a goal line uh, drill. So there you go. Kirk is human. One of us. One of us. Addison was also super impressive. So uh, he was in full pads and full participant after being in concussion protocol last week, uh, but was making catches at all three levels. Uh, super clean, super mean routes. Was making plays in traffic. Uh, had a couple of touchdowns as well, and he's good to go, man. And there, there was a clip out there where uh, it, it was really nondescript, but it was Jefferson and Addison running a combo route on the same side. It's just like, ooh. 18 3 and me. Let's go. Let's go, man. Uh, the Vikings are super deep at wide receiver. So, uh, like we mentioned, Jalen Rager was out there making plays. Brandon Powell was out there making plays uh, as well. And yes, I mean, some of the plays were on Chris Boyd. Now, don't want to be rude or condescending, uh, but Arizona, it's kind of clear that new GM Monty Austin for the Pride of the Universe in Minnesota Morris uh, kind of wants to tank this thing. <laughs> They, they want to drive this thing into the ground. They want to get Caleb Williams. They want to get uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. Because remember, they have the Texans first round pick as well. So maybe this is like a major league situation where that they're not fielding the best possible roster. So you do have to take that into account. Uh Again, no disrespect. Mm. Uh, and uh, but yeah, but the Vikings are super deep at wide receiver, and they're going to have to make some very tough decisions because I think the Vikings will keep eight receivers uh, in the sphere, whether that's five on the fifty-three and three on uh, practice squad or six and two. So there's going to be some really good players who do not make this team. It's going to be uh, r- really tough decisions uh, at that wide receiver spot. Vikings super deep there. Interior offensive line uh, is where they are not deep, so it struggled again and. You could understand if the offensive line, interior offensive line struggled against Tennessee. Tennessee, led by Jeffrey Simmons, I mean, they're studly uh, in the middle. But Arizona, and it was kind of rough, you know, watching Ezra and Bradbury and, to a degree, Ed Ingram struggle. They're, like, there were there was miscommunications, and it wasn't even anything that major. I mean, Arizona was just running stunts, uh, some TNE stuff, playing some games up front, and... You know, one bad rep is one one thing, but when it, it continues to happen over and over and over again, sign Dalton Reisner, sign Jason Peters, have him play guard, don't care at this point, just fix it, fix it. Uh, because also, as, as we've seen from the preseason games, the offensive line depth, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, defensively. So Ivan Pace Jr. still with the ones. Uh, Asuma was in full pads, but he didn't uh, participate in team drills. Now, I think this is what's going to happen uh, at the start of the regular season. I think it's going to be Pace and Hicks. I think eventually it will be Pace and Asuma. Uh, but the fact that Ivan Pace Jr. has gone from UDFA to starting week one says a lot about him. Maybe it says a lot about the Vikings off-ball linebacker depth, too. But no, I think it says much more about Ivan Pace Jr. Byron Murphy Jr., 
another junior, he had some juice today, man. So, of course, go, going against his former team, uh, he was get, giving out a, a lot of dap and love to some of his former teammates before practice, but then he was stuck like glue. Baby, I was stuck like glue to my guy. That's right, where uh, he, had, he had some great reps uh, against uh, Marquise Brown. He had some great reps against the rest of the Cardinals receivers. And uh, in team drills, in one-on-ones, I mean, seven is going to be good to go. Oh, thank heaven for seven, man. There you go. Speaking of corners, so Jawan Williams back with the ones. Uh, it's sort of come full circle because Jawan opened camp with the ones and then it sort of rotated through. Blackman was getting some time. Uh, Booth Jr. was getting some time. Uh, but Jawan has overall been really steady uh, on the outside. He's got that length. Uh, he's able to play tough and physical with receivers. Uh, he had, had a couple of nice uh, PBUs uh, in the exhibition games. Uh, but he's back in there with uh, Caleb and Murph. Uh, mainly because uh, Blackman had that shoulder issue that they're easing him back in. Uh, he wasn't our participant in team drills, uh, but I think Joan Williams is uh, pretty solid uh, to make this roster. Brian O'Neill, full participant. So it was great to see him out there uh, in full team drills, 7-on-7, seven 11-on-11. Seven, 11 on 11. Um, well, he wouldn't be out there in 7-on-7, seven seven, but 11-on-11. Yeah, 11 11. Uh, it's good to see him moving well, and I I'm glad that he, you know, the plan to get him ready for week one uh, is coming to fruition. Uh, some injury updates. So, Hawkinson, the ear infection, according to Kevin O'Connell, is cleared up, but he's got a lower back stiffness. That's right. Uh, Vikings fans have a lot of stiffness after watching some of those deep balls. Woo-woo! That's right, man. Uh, Asma, uh, it's revealed it's a shoulder uh, that's been bugging him. Uh, Blackman was in full pads, but no team drills. Uh, same thing with Hawk and, and Asma. Uh, no Lewis seen uh, after he tweaked something up on Monday. So, you know, TBD what's going to happen with him this week. Uh, also, no King Kenne, no Najee Thompson, who's potentially in concussion protocol. Uh, Nikhil Harry is out as well. Uh, oh, it's funny. When I, I was reading off an uh, uh, in injury report uh, from the other day, it said Harry. So I automatically just thought, I don't know, Harrison Smith or Harrison Phillips, but no, it's Nikhil Harry. I, I'm really smart. Mm. Uh, also, Jaqueline Roy was a full go, uh, getting, getting uh, some first-team reps again. I think he's going to be a monster this week, and I can't wait to see him uh, in the final preseason game. But that's it. That's it. Uh, Arizona Joint uh, Practice Recap Numero Uno uh, is in the books. Let us know your thoughts and our thoughts in the comment section below. Subscribe for Daily Vikings Takes. Want to support the work? Put a little something in the Venmo, but to next time, Skull Production Value.